Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to another Sunday Frequently Asked Questions with Zach and Elliot. And uh, we're going to wrap up a series on dealing with difficult people this morning. And so today we're going to talk about uh, those that are uh, argumentative. And the uh, second one would be user, those that are, they tend to be users and manipulators. And then, uh, you know, people with different opinions, some of those uh, people can be my way or the highway and be very difficult to uh, deal with. So we'll dive on into the argumentative. These are, if you've ever, you know, thought about someone that, uh, you know, they would argue with a stop sign. They would just, I don't know if that's a teenage trait, honestly, or if I might have one uh, or two of those in my house, but... I think I, uh, and I blame myself partly for, for letting them argue with me about certain things. But anyway, I've got some champion arguers <laughs> in my house. Uh, so the argumentative, you know, they, the, but these are the ones, uh, these are not, it's different than the overly aggressive. So they may not be angry, may not show uh, anger or aggression. They just love to argue. And uh, they like to stir things up. They enjoy a good argument. They enjoy a good sparring match. And uh, it doesn't matter what it is. They'll, they'll try to get one going. And they like that. Um, so I'm wired the opposite way for sure. I do not enjoy a sparring match at all. And I'm, I'm probably too much that way. I don't mind the sparring but, matches <clears throat> as long as I'm right. Well, then you don't mind them. Then I don't mind them. Right. <laughs> we talked about you last week, by the way. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, they may tend to become argumentative out of having to be right. I did not. I did not even time that. I didn't know you were going to say that, but that's right. That's what it's, the notes say. Sometimes they are argumentative because they have to be right. And uh, it may be more that than, they really, than that they really believe what they're saying. It's just... Um, you know, you may say something that they get a little defensive about, and now they're gonna That's they're it. gonna dig again. You know, we were talking about sometimes you're telling a story, and I did this on Tuesday, and someone else they know it was you know they think no, you that was Wednesday, it wasn't Tuesday. Well, no, it was Tuesday because I it was I did this, and and I mean now we have this full blown argument about what day of the week it was, which matters not a hill of beans to the story, but you know that's an argumentative person. They they're gonna. Once, once that uh, that thing in their brain is tripped, it's on. And it is, isn't it interesting too that you're both agreeing that you know whatever that somebody came by the building. Yeah, yeah, you're in but agreement. But it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. Like that's that's like minor to it typically, unless you're trying to find out what happened, you know, linking it to some other event. But yes, but you both agree on this. But that is. There is no middle ground, and there's no, you know, shaking hands, hey, we at least agree on this one. It's, <laughs> right. no, no, that Wednesday <laughs> yeah, thing is, is going to be the death of you. <laughs> so, you know, tips in dealing with these type people. Again, we go back to James 1.19. It's amazing how this one verse applies to so much conflict we have with people. But... Uh, James 1.19, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. And I would remind you that scripture is not just telling us what to do, but how to do it. It's telling us how to be slow to anger. And the way to do that is, is to train yourself to uh, be patient in having to argue or having to, to talk and just listen to people. And be quick to listen, slow to speak. You know, uh, real quick, uh, something that you've done in the past as well in your unoffendable classes um, is, or, or even in the, the marriage class before that, is not is it, teaching yourself not to formulate your next sentence, idea, mm -hmm. thought, and yep. continue working on that before you even listen. Because so many times we'll get ourselves in trouble because they're saying something and it's like Charlie Brown teachers and adults just wah, 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 and you're in yep. here just going when I get all these papers in a row yep. I'm going to say this and I'm going to slap that one I'm going to drop this bomb and then we're going to win this thing sure. and I didn't hear a word the other party said yeah absolutely a lot of time there have been a lot of arguments with my wife it looked like I was listening <laughs> so 
If this said <laughs> quick to look like you're listening, I was nailing that every time. But yeah, but that uh, doesn't mean I was. Um, you know, try another tip is to try to turn the situation so that you're not on opposite sides. So just as an example, um, it's kind of silly, but the example about arguing about the day, Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, if we were doing that, then the tip would be to, to try to set that aside. Well, regardless of what day it was, you know, we both, you know, we agree that on what happened. Right. And so find your common ground with someone who's argumentative. Uh, you know, you have to kind of pick and choose your battles also. Some, this type, these type people will argue with you if you will argue with them on anything. So it's, up to, it's not going to be up to them because they're always ready to go. Uh, it's going to be up to you to pick and choose. And oftentimes you need to just let something be. Let, or just say, okay, um, y- even if you think they're wrong on whatever it is, Okay, I, I basically agree to disagree, and so we don't have to, you don't have to argue with an argumentative person. Uh, what if I am an argumentative person? So, um, what do I, you know, what are some tips for me that would help me? And one is to just realize that you tend to be this way, and it's true about all these things, um, which is important as Christians. We are, you know, our, the whole premise of being a Christian is that Christ is living in me, and it's not me, but it's Christ. So uh, what is it about me that's not Christ-like? I need to work on that. And if you're an argumentative person, then recognize that you are and try to work on it. You know, one thing last couple weeks ago, you slapped down on the table and said, listen, i got to take this one. My issue is not necessarily that I'm wrong, but that even on some of the smaller issues that we could just say, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. If I know that that person came by the building on Tuesday and not Wednesday, like you keep implying, yeah. then yeah. my sole purpose, yeah. you can get consumed with it. Uh, and you think almost because you, whether you've got a great memory or you've got a you know a photographic memory or something, you just know realizing that, okay, let's say that you do change your mind. Now, what have we accomplished? Like, what has been done? True. Or, if we just don't realize in that situation, what are the damages? You know, so we're thinking, okay, I've got to win this. Why? Because all the, then you're both going to agree that someone came by on, on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Okay, you don't get anything. But in that, yeah. you could say something. Things get heated. Things for no reason. And now, relationships are... Now I'm trying to be on the men because of something pointless. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I, you know, I can see how tempting that would be if you, if you, like you're saying, you, you, you have a great memory, you know, hundred percent it was Tuesday, you know it was, and given enough time arguing with them, you could convince them. Right. But then, what have you done? What damage have you done? Um, an, another, a really good tip for an argumentative person is Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, uh, for they shall be called sons of God. And just a reminder that God has called us to peace. Uh, it doesn't mean there's never a time to, um, you know, to share a, a godly point or something about Scripture or biblical truth and, and that somebody may disagree with, but we're, we're trying to spread the word and share the gospel. But as far as being argumentative with people, we're called to be peacemakers. So basically go from what, if I'm an argumentative person, then that's something that's just, um, it happens easily for me, and it's, uh, I just enjoy it, and I don't see why others don't enjoy it, and um, it's just fun. And, and, but I need to probably go the opposite way and try to focus more on connecting with people and having more harmony and peace. Uh, another one is ask yourself uh, whatever it is you're arguing about with someone or you want to argue about is this a spiritual eternal thing that can be a huge a huge barrier too that we just completely overlook um, or a huge obstacle um, so many times we, we will find ourselves and it may be something that is a little weightier than just was it a Tuesday or Wednesday it could right, have something right. that may have real physical importance but mm-hmm. how often do we put 
the physical concerns above the spiritual and going, oh, we're going we're gonna to hash this out because it needs to be done. This is yeah. super important. This isn't just a Tuesday-Wednesday thing. Right. But then in relation to <clears throat> spiritual warfare, spiritual building up and edification, where does it fall? Sometimes we can lose sight of that. Absolutely. Um, another one is to remember that most people do not enjoy a good sparring match. You don't? So, no. <laughs> no. Uh, it, I'm, I believe that to be true. And if it's not true, then I promise you a lot of people do not enjoy a good argument. Um, God did not call us to be the police of the world on earthly matters. And that is a little tempting for us, I think, especially as Americans. We live in a nation where each of us, this is, it's we the people. It's our nation. It's very unique, and it's a huge blessing um, to be an American citizen. But it also, it, it, we're a little entitled, and we, we think, not only do we get to vote, I mean, we can demonstrate peacefully, and we can do all kinds of freedom of speech, and so our voice can be heard and so often I think the devil lures us into uh, disputes about earthly things and God, you know, or, or we're trying to correct others in their life and it's not a spiritual matter. We're not, we're not trying to share God's wisdom. We're trying to share our wisdom and we're trying to police people. Um, you know, you have the term uh, the political police or politically correct police and, and this is just growing and growing and growing and... Um, it's a problem. So, 2 Corinthians 5.20, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. So, just a reminder, that's our, we're not police, police in the world on earthly matters. We are ambassadors on godly matters and trying to share the gospel. So, uh, let's get into the second one. Users and manipulators, who are they? These people, uh, they may come across genuine, but uh, oftentimes they have an agenda and uh, they will they can be very charming they may say what you want to hear they may have different cards. I would call them cards that they play to uh, get their way but, and that's kind of at the heart of it they're trying to get they they <clears throat> we all are selfish to a degree these people have a kind of problem in their personality of being selfish they've either been trained to do this they've learned it from their parents maybe they've had a very difficult childhood and uh, and so they've kind of developed the skill of manipulating people, but they'll play a card of you know to get your sympathy, maybe a poor me card. They may turn around and hit you with a guilt trip card, um, you know, and, and they can they can play cards that are almost seem opposite, and and you don't know, but you're just drawn to try to help them. Um, they may tend to lie a lot, and I would say they do. So how do you deal with someone like this? Uh, I'm not, you know, this is not uh, so much a con artist, like an actual uh, true con artist, but this is just someone that um, they kind of they kind of work people. They they're uh, they're crafty, and that's kind of their go-to. So try to have sympathy. They they uh, they may have had a difficult past, and that's how they develop, you know, this way of being. You definitely want to take what they say with a grain of salt, and you probably already learned that. If you if you know a person like this and you deal with them, you've already learned to take what they say with a grain of salt. You want to be watchful for how they're trying to manipulate you, especially as Christians. We're you know we're hardwired in Christ to <clears throat> somebody needs something, I'll give it. You need help, I'll help you. Uh, you know, love your neighbor. So we're hardwired that way. And uh, but these type of individuals, um, we need to be cautious with basically set boundaries regarding what what is yours and what is theirs and that's the boundaries are about you know what's your obligation or your responsibility or your guilt sometimes it, you have to set a boundary and say I know you're you think I should feel bad for whatever it is that happened to you but you know that's that's you know that's your situation I didn't do anything to cause that you know the the comment about you know we're hardwired that way some more than others some have you know the gift of giving or hospitality and and they just want you know, we would call those people sometimes they just want everybody to be happy with them so right. the people pleasers and and unfortunately uh, these users or manipulators have a good eye for those people if they go to someone and 
ask for things and try to get their way and they realize they're not going to play ball, so to speak, they'll move on. But, you know, this the it, the user and manipulator, if, if they get connected with a people pleaser, the people pleaser almost doesn't stand a chance because it almost feels like you're not allowed to say no. You're not allowed to deny someone because you may all of a sudden, out of context, pull a verse and think, well, you didn't give them, you didn't clothe them, you didn't feed them, they were sick, and you didn't help them. Well, what if what if I say no? Like, you know, we assume right. we have to just say yes to everything, but that is very, you know, unhealthy for both parties, and it is okay to recognize, you know, abusing your generosity or goodness. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say be very careful. Maybe you're in a position where, You've got someone that is relying on you for things, and they're becoming burdensome because uh, you know the requests never end. They um, are constantly asking you for uh, money, for supplies, or, or you know your services, and you realize they're taking advantage of you. It is not outside of your um, abilities or liberties to try and find other ways for them to receive help or for you to right. get out of that situation. So don't think just because. Uh, you know, you we are a Christian. We have to just every time someone asks, you have to give something up. Yeah, it's a great point. And you know, we encountered this some as a church last summer, last um, June, and and through the summer and early fall with our flood relief center. We had we were able to help people, certain people in certain ways, but there were limits. And and we had people coming and asking, um, you know, for all kinds of things, and we don't know them, and, and sometimes it would seem like somebody would fit this category, but uh, we wouldn't really, we didn't investigate them, but we would, we had to set limits, and there was uh, basically a boundary. Here's what we can do, here's what we cannot do, and it, it sometimes feels, it doesn't feel right sometimes, um, but we, but the fact is we can't help everyone or give everything, so there's always going to be some limits. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 is a good example of setting a boundary. It's where Paul said, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. And what that's saying is, that man who's lazy and not working, uh, we could feed him. But he has a responsibility too. And I, our responsibility is not to uh, you know, make sure he's fed if he's not going to get up and work and he can work. And So you know, that's a, a boundary of separating what is... Uh, responsibilities so what if I sometimes what if you are this person what if sometimes you tend to you know boy I don't know I don't know how I got here but yeah I tend to kind of tell people what they want to hear and, and I kind of know what I want and I can I can get people to do things that I want and sometimes I lie to do that and I know I do it and I don't really you know so the uh, if that's you be honest with yourself so you can improve so you can change uh, be watchful for when you are tempted to manipulate and, you know, uh, learn to not manipulate people. And basically you're controlling and you're forcing them uh, in a way to do what you want them to do. And then really the uh, uh, great advice is to for you to focus on being more selfless because a manipulator is driven by selfishness. They think they need to get what they're trying to get. And so focus on giving. Uh, Paul quoted Jesus in Acts 20.35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So learn the joy of giving and helping others. All right, third and our final category in this uh, series on diff dealing with difficult people is uh, people with different opinions. And these people are kind of um, my way or the highway. And if you're talking with them and disagreeing on a topic, uh, and you know, through the years, there's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but there's a saying that you don't bring up uh, politics and the other one, religion. Uh, so th we kind of have this saying in our culture that these two topics are, if you get, if you, uh, if you bring that up in a social setting, get ready, it may be disastrous. And that's unfortunate. That what that means is people have um, have been this way, my my way, the highway. They have discussed a topic that they disagreed on in such a way that everyone, when it was over, wished we hadn't even brought it up. That's or a, that's a bad deal. Relationships are broken or yes. torn. 
um, <clears throat> you know, if we can't absolutely. get to the point where we can discuss these things. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's always, there are always plenty of topics that can be uh, difficult with a my way or the highway type personality. But politics and religion are, are two big ones. Uh, right now, the coronavirus is a huge one for us. We're all struggling with it, um, you know, trying to manage it is impacting all of us in some way. And so uh, that's a big topic that, that's being talked about and, and sometimes really causing problems in relationships. But it can be other things. Um, how to <clears throat> how to deal with someone who is a my way or the highway type. One thing to remember is uh, to separate eternal and spiritual differences that you have from them from earthly differences. So earthly type things that we argue about politics. Um, uh, the coronavirus, honestly, is an earthly matter. I'm not saying it is not worth you <clears throat> thinking about or having an opinion or uh, you know researching or whatever it is, but for us to fuss with each other in the church, for the for Christians to do that in the way that the world does, because the world gets ugly when they disagree. The world gets black and white and you're wrong and I'm right and they do that. You know, politics is a good example of that. Listen to some some political talk in this country among our citizens and and you would think, you know, you just can't be the other party and be a, a, a good person. Can't do it. And so that's a my way, the highway type uh, attitude. But so is this an eternal spiritual matter? Uh, it's good to separate that. And a, a scripture I want to, uh, bring up is Romans 14 1 and this is where Paul says as for the one who is weak in faith welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions <clears throat> and uh, NIV 84 says without passing judgment on disputable matters uh, Holman translation says don't argue about doubtful issues so in you know in the first century in the church at Rome they were having, really, in other churches too, but uh, they were struggling because some Christians really felt it wrong to eat meat that was sold in the marketplace because it was probably used in idol worship. They would use it, and then they would prepare to sell. It would be ready to sell, and they felt like, boy, you should not even eat uh, any of that. And other Christians, and Paul was in this group, who knew that that's really not an issue. Just because it was used some way before doesn't mean I can't eat it and it, it's not a violation to God. But Paul's his uh, point on it is, reading on in verse 2, says one person believes he may eat anything, that would be Paul, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. Let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. My goodness, that's a situation where Paul is right. He's right on the issue. Um, He knows he's right. But it's not an eternal type. It's not worth fighting for because he also knows if I fight and prove my and stand my ground on this, I'm going to destroy my brother in my relationship. And um, that's a struggle. And the, the secondary struggle, we may refer to this, and we may full well know, uh, but another fault, or, or a fault of Paul's would have been after this, or just take it to nowadays, would be if, if I felt like I was right, or knew I was right on a certain situation, and who gets to decide who's the one with the weaker faith? And so, trying to point out, and puffing the chest up, and coming in, and well, I'm going to let them believe this lesser thing because they are the weaker faith. You're not doing any, you know, you, you didn't you didn't save it. It's kind of like when we went before right. when we talked about the story about uh, how should we act towards our, our Christian brothers and sisters if one believes about this corona thing that you can't have your windows cracked at, at Walmart, roll it up. If I roll it up and roll my eyes and, you know, do a bunch of gesturing... Right. What have I really done? Have I really taken the high road, or right. you know, am I trying to still prove a point while you know looking like you know, kind of like you said, do I do I look like I listened, or did I listen? Did I look like sure. I was acting like Christ, yeah. or 
you know, was I still trying to get my point across? Yeah, because the weaker mm-hmm. faith is not about looking down on them because they have weaker, they're weaker faith. Oh, boy. The weaker faith is to have sympathy for them, you know, to, have, to, to care about them and their position enough that if that may, and really Paul's conclusion on this was Paul said, if that offends my brother to eat meat, I won't eat meat again. Uh, he would sacrifice that to save the uh, the spiritual you know relationships. So that's really a, a position we're in now. And there's always after Corona's gone, there will be other things to argue about. There are always things. So, but dealing with people who are black and white. Uh, can be difficult because so it kind of comes back to an argumentative person be careful you know getting in the arena with them because is it worth it is that really you know uh, they may not argue in a Christ-like way and honestly social media is a challenge right now for us because a lot of times our disagreements on things like this politics religion corona um, we have it out on social media we put something out there I can't believe people could believe this way and how ridiculous and boom we post it and honestly it doesn't have any good effect um, it's not helping someone who needs help it's not changing anyone's mind those that agree with you are applauding those that disagree are unfollowing and we're not getting anywhere so <clears throat> I mean, and while you're on the topic, I mean, just to try and be realistic about it, I mean, there, I think even in these classes, we've talked about it before, you and I disagree in certain areas uh, right. regarding the coronavirus. But, right. I, you know, I haven't, I'm not looking for another job. We don't spend all our days in here debating. It's, yeah, you think this way, I think this way. But that goes, again, when coronavirus is gone, there's going to be other things. Luckily, right. we can agree on OU. That I mean that that OSU that thing. Helps. We don't You're agree on that one. With that. I understand. I'm still in I'm this not, office. I don't love it. We are making these but. these videos in this office, <laughs> and <clears throat> I will choose to accept that and know you're of the weaker, you right the weaker so faith, you see it. so I can see it perfectly. I appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> but I will recognize in, a, in an incorrect manner that you're in the weaker faith regarding the OSU, and, and I will pray for you. Right. Uh, no, I th- I think it's. <laughs> I think it's good to share, you know, what, what Zach is saying is the fact that uh, people are really getting uh, polarized in two different camps on the coronavirus, and they're, they're either uh, toward one side that we need to be more careful, or they're toward the other side that um, uh, our carefulness and restrictions have been too much. And you lean one way, and I lean the other way, and... But when we talk about it, we don't, neither one of us get black and white, or my way or the highway about it. Neither one of us uh, are become argumentative. And so, you know, we are respectful of each other. We're that way in person. We're that way on social media with each other. So um, that's, you know, I think that's the way uh, Christ would want it. And I think the, what the world needs to see is that Christians, if they disagree on politics or things that are earthly, coronavirus is an earthly matter. I know it's life and death uh, can be, but it's still an, an earthly issue, and we can deal with it. We can communicate our uh, thought on it in a, in a very honorable, respectful way, because when we get into this sassy, um, dishonorable, really harsh, you know, strong language, we're not, we're not accomplishing anything good. Uh, we're not going to win. Not, we're not going to change anyone's mind. And then I just my big fear is if the world sees Christians arguing like the world argues, why do they want to be a Christian? Well, even, even two-step here, I mean, just thinking of it just in the physical, assuming that I wasn't a, wasn't a Christian and I'm just looking online, if, if you present your side in a just I'm gonna you know information this this without degrading you know and that's one thing but if I'm looking and I see you know degrading you know belittling talk demeaning people condescending what have you if I'm still undecided I'm definitely not gonna side with that because it, right. it, it doesn't draw a taste you to in it. your mouth but then right. take that one step further if I'm a Christian 
I'm applying that. You hold a banner. I mean, like you read earlier, we are ambassadors for Christ. We're not ambassadors right. for things of this world. So right. you're holding a banner that I am follower. I'm a follower of Christ. And so if I'm on the outside and I see that, no one's going to want to go sign me up to be a Christian. I'm going to act like that, you know. Right. Um, so we have to be really yeah. careful in all ways when we talk about who's watching us. Yeah, the things that we, we say or we may follow, we may differ, but also how we respond to others, they're watching that as well, and that could very well put a bad taste in their mouth. A absolutely. It's difficult. I mean, the world can, the world can uh, act ugly. I mean, or they can, they can be, um, you know, they can say things any way they want to. And as Christians, we, we cannot because God calls us to be salt of the earth. Uh, we're to be a city on the hill, so we're, we're trying to win souls ultimately. And my fear uh, is that as Christians, it would be a shame if we act a certain way with politics or corona or whatever it is um, in person or on social media, and we lose listeners because of it. In, in other words, people don't want to, they either unfriend us or they avoid us, and now our influence for Christ is lost and uh, not to mention they may not want to be a Christian because of it. Um, be careful about text and uh, email and whatever's written. Social media, be careful. What you intended with a good uh, spirit may be read in a totally different way. That happens a lot. Um, and so, anyway, those are some thoughts on uh, people who are kind of my way or the highway types. I uh, encourage you to kind of summarize all of this. Uh, just remember Christ is our Savior, and we are disciples. We are followers of Him, so we're continually trying to be as Christ would uh, was and as Christ would have us to be. So thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to worshiping together in uh, just a few moments.